Do you know like when you had a case with a game in it mm. and you open it, you, hear, you could hear that little shing of like mm. the CD, like <laughs> shing. Like, Give it to me. Oh, or if good. it had like multiple discs and it oh, had that, yeah, like, and flappy, had that flappy one thing. in the oh, middle. Oh my God. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We all remember this. You ready? You grab it. Yeah. Oh. Get, that, get that plastic the open. Plastic off. Tear yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, and then you man. look at it. And you go, oh. <laughs> The oh, cracking that was sound. That was a very good. I that, forgot yeah, all about great, that. Actually, the crack, the crack, and then the yeah. pop. Oh, oh the pop. Ooh, yeah. Man. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. It might look a bit different. It's actually dark now. This is our first podcast. This is our after dark podcast that we're filming. Does that mean we can say whatever we want? It doesn't. It just means that the sun it has literally set. That's all it means. Uh, um, but we have TN with us. It has been a minute since TN's been on the podcast. First pod of the year. I know I mean, it right? is. Yeah. What have you been up to TN? Um, pretty much same as last year. Bit of gaming, mm -hmm. um, bit of working, bit of chilling, bit of living life really. You know? That's a good playing. combo, that. Yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's a great combo Can't to have. It's an amazing I mean. combo. Did you um, get any new games to kick off the new year? I did, you know. Um, <sighs> you can see the way I'm smiling. <laughs> um, so I got God of War over Christmas. Okay. And it was. it's just, like, I have, have, don't even think I've got far into it. But um, yeah, it's just an amazing game. I got the other version. So the first version la last Christmas, played that. And I was just like, I've got to get this version. Like, I played it. So um yeah, I went to Argos, bought a physical copy, and um, yeah, I just been playing it, been banging it, and just been loving it, man. It's just so good. Well, the thing is, because I've got a PS5, right? And mm. everyone, when you get a new console or whatever, you always Google like what are the top games to, yeah. to be playing. Mm -hmm. God of War has always been up there. Whenever I checked, even yeah. back in PS4 days, of course, right? But I've never actually sunk my teeth into it and got involved with it. Sell it to me, T. <sighs> I mean. I think, you know what it is? I think it's the perfect game, especially for you, because you like Zelda and that sort of stuff. I think the storyline is just intense. Yeah. Like, And I haven't really played old God of Wars. So old God of Wars on like PS2 and PS3 and that, Kratos was like very, like he was young. Mm. So he was a very, very powerful person. You know what I mean? But now he's grown up, he's got a son. So it's like, it's got this like transformative like storyline where he's like become a dad now, but obviously he can still see how like crazy and strong this guy is. And the storyline, it just like, you don't need to play the new ones on PS4 and PS5 to know what has happened on the previous ones yeah. kind of thing. But it's just so in depth. So there's like, for the, for example, I don't really want to spoil it, but in the old, the first God of War, the 2018 one, there's like a section where he does, like he's really trying to forget about his past, but he can't, he needs to fight. So he's put like these blades under like the shed. And as he's walking towards the blades, it's just like all these flashbacks of like people, um, things happening in the past, people telling him he couldn't do it, he can't change, but he just goes and gets the blades. It's just, the storyline is so intense. And <laughs> it's just like- Are there good bosses in it? Cause I've, I, I don't want to spoil anything in case you haven't come across anything yet. Have you played, have, have you defeated any bosses in the game? I've defeated quite a lot. I wouldn't say there's any good ones so far. Okay. I mean, there's, there's one, but. Like, I don't know. I don't know how the story is going to go. You know what I mean? But yeah. And I, I can refrain sense. from saying anything. But this is what I love about gaming, right? I can sense the passion it's in you. Such a good game, bro. Because But what, when a game grabs you like that, it's game over for all these. Yeah, years. that's like, it. Everything else gets put on the shelf. Yeah. It's yeah. like, this is it now. And like, 100%. Is it, do you feel, found it like almost like a, a proper good Netflix series where like, you just want to keep going. Or when, when you're not playing it, you're like, I can't wait to get home and play it. Yeah. Like, that's all yeah. bad. I think that's exactly what it is. I think it's so hard as well because because you want to know what the storyline is and because the game's so good, there's like side missions. But I'm like, I don't really want to do the side missions. I need to know what happens at the end kind of thing. Get to the meat. Yeah, I need to get to the, the nitty gritty. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So that's, I think that's the beauty of single player games as well because mm. you can kind of play them at your own pace. You don't necessarily need to like be online and everything's like, running at 100 miles per hour and you've got like young kids like taking me out on like Fortnite or something like that. I can just kind of play at my own pace and I fully understand the storyline and it's just so good. It's in depth. That's what Do you I know what it's like, right? It's like it's when like you're single, right? <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Let's imagine you're talking to a selection of people. Right. A few yeah. different people, right? And all of a sudden, the one comes. <laughs> You know, and you, and you text the others, or you're like, guys, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't feel the same. Everyone's fall away. This, I got, I've got God of War now. Yeah, man. <laughs> I've got God of War now. Uh, That's look, what you're we were talking before we got into the into the the podcast about like how you earn that a physical. You didn't like 
go and download it from the PS5 yeah. or whatever. And there's been a lot of articles, Harry, recently about like- There has. The, almost like the death of the physical copy yeah. and how like the emergence of everyone purchasing like digital editions rather than, you know, with Xbox Game Pass mm -hmm. and uh, PlayStation Plus. It's sort of, it's changing the landscape and, the, and it continues to happen, doesn't it? I think it's Ubisoft that said recently that you have to, people have to become comfortable with not owning their games. Mm. And at first I was like, outrageous. I was like, what is this? And then I thought about it and I was like, they're not wrong in a way. Like every other medium we consume, Netflix subscription, mm. yeah. Spotify or Amazon Music, whatever you're using, subscription. Mm. Like who's going and buying their music these days? I'm, I'm not buying any, Me. you buy music? Yep. How, how, how you can, what do you mean? So like, it's hard because I still want to buy CDs, but yeah, I just, it, it's, I don't have a CD player. So like I do, I, I specifically bought vinyl record player mm -hmm. just so I could buy vinyls of my favorite artists. That's it. I think that's a, yeah, I think that's valid. I, I think everyone likes the idea of owning a vinyl player and mm. having a collection of vinyls, but that is more something that's like a luxury yes. collector's thing. Thing than like the convenience of listening to music every single day. You're not going to take your vinyl player out with you on the tube. True. Um, and every other medium that we consume has a, become just a subscription service. So I was thinking about this, and I was like, no, of course I want. If I'm playing a game, I want to own it. Like I, I'm paying for it. Give me the game. Yep. But I started to think about it in a different light, in terms of like a single player game. Most of the time, I'm just going to play through it once. And I probably won't ever touch it again. So does it really make sense for me to buy the entire game and own it for the sake of only playing it once? Or am I going to sign up to a subscription service like seven to 10 pounds a month, play a bunch of games, maybe for a small period of time, but never own them? And I always tend to see things as when you go to the movies, you pay, how much is it to go to the movies? I haven't been for ages, but I want to say like a tenner, right? Yeah, I mean, up north, eight quid. Eight yeah. quid. 75 quid. Yeah. <laughs> 70, yeah. You're not wrong there, bro. And you're going and you're watching the movie once and you're because paying- you pay for the experience, right? Of what, yeah. sitting in a dark room and looking at screen? And nah. Do you like cinema? I love cinema. I love cinema, to be fair. Me too. I'm a massive fan. I think but what's the experience? Is it like the novelty of like seeing it with everyone else for the it's first about, time? It's, it, and do you know what? I think you can re relate it to video games, right? I think when you purchase a physical copy of anything, mm -hmm. game, music, or like if you go to the cinema, you make a spectacle slash moment slash event out of that purchase. Yeah, 100%. So it means more to you. And it's yes. more memorable. So it's like you can download a game on Xbox Game Pass, right? Mm -hmm. Within a matter of minutes or whatever, and you're playing it. Could be the best game in the world, but it doesn't hit the same because it's just part of a subscription service. It's like mm -hmm. on to the next. Well, I can try this one. I can try that one. Back in the day when I was younger, I'd go buy PS2 games. I was literally about to say the same thing. If it like, was rubbish, and it's yeah. I'm rocking it because I, I, I put my money down. Hundred percent. And I think I've I've got this attachment with buying games. Like in my house, I've got like I could, I could send you a picture, but I've got like a load of PS2 games. I've got like four shelves of just physical copies of the PS2 game with like them. Some of them still has like the manual inside it and everything like, like the disc might be scratched up. It's just like, for me, that was like a whole experience, like fighting tooth and nail to go blockbuster and pleading with my mum mm -hmm. to buy the game, like ha seeing the game scratched up and having to like oh, hold over yeah, the yeah. disc and like <laughs> yeah. wipe it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's the same experience I have, which is why I felt like, for example, with God of War, I had to buy the physical copy because mm -hmm. it just, I don't know, there's something about, like Ian said, it's a build up towards going and just getting it. Whereas I like, think yeah. it's definitely exciting to own the physical product. And, and when you were younger, it was like a game that you were really looking forward to. Like I remember going to buy GTA 5 and going to like game to get it. And like having the physical copy in my hand felt more rewarding than just being able to go on Xbox Game Pass and like download the game. But I do think that times are changing. And do you now want to sit and play a game that you might not be interested in because you've spent money on it? Or do you want to be able to try a multitude of games and once you're done playing, you don't have to pay the money to play it anymore if you don't want to? I think the issue is, it's not just the subscription services, is it? Like, you could just buy digital copies of games outright if they're not on the platform yeah. as well. Like, I bought Harry Potter. You went big on Harry yeah. Potter, what, right? Mm -hmm. 60, 65 quid that was, digital. Mm. I didn't play it. Yeah, same. 
I bought this. I'm time more on for buying that game. Not because yeah. it's not a good game. I just didn't get around to playing yeah. it and it's just sitting there. Like, I can't take that in. And that brings me on to my next point, right? So apparently, game are removing their trade in portion of the company. Do you know? Oh, man. I never traded in at game, though. What? I always went to like CEX nah. or somewhere to trade in games. Do you know what? Before, before CEX was a thing, I used to go to game. You used to trade I, in I, all I your traded games. and I know they were like robbing me and ripping me off. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. They like, do rob you. You can see it. Like, you know when you go on the website, you see we buy for eight pounds, we mm-hmm. sell for one pound 25 and they'll give you like store credit of like three pounds. <laughs> I know I'm getting ripped off, but yeah. that was a, it was a great time. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was the ease of being able to do it, I guess, and like put all of your game, old games in and get like one oh, brand new oh, game oh, that I you love, really the want thing to. Is, so good. You're trading in. So if you've completed like three different games and they're just sitting around in your house, you're like, you know what? I'm just going to pop down a game, see what these are worth. There's the excitement of handing it over and they go, boop, 50p. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy-five p. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, great. Right, you that. can have FIFA for forty-five quid. I, yeah, I mean, I've saved a bit of money, but it, it, again, it was that experience. I yeah. mean, CEX, of course, still exists, but you're not able to go into CEX and buy a brand new copy. Yeah, which is which is the sad part. And I just think that we're losing part of what makes gaming special. Yeah, I think. Yeah, a, a lot I of agree. it is from when we were young. Like, it isn't it? It's no, that nostalgic feel. Do you know what I mean? Like. I like even like buying games, like obviously like we mentioned digital copies. For me, when I was young and I used to like play FIFA, which is now FC, there was nothing better than finishing school and running to get, to get the physical copy of FIFA to mm-hmm. then go home, yeah. if that makes sense. So um, yeah, or like when, cause I was like 12 and my mom bought me Call of Duty, shout out my mom. But like <laughs> I'd come home and I'd see Call of Duty there. The, like, And it's not even just the, the digital version. It's just the, seeing the case there. Yeah. brought like this bundle of joy it was just it's an amazing feeling i feel like we're losing that feel kind of thing yeah, yeah. i don't think you get that with anything anymore i mean it's the same with like cds and yeah. stuff sometimes mm-hmm. i would go like if i went to the sh- store and bought a cd it felt much different but at the same time as bad as it feels to be losing that like magical part of like being young and being able to go to the shop and buying something with your own money and yep. and having the physical copy there are pros and cons to each i mean like now there's not probably tons of manufacturing waste and things like that and yeah, it's true. much easier to just very go true. online that's and true. download something also they're making consoles without cd drives anymore now like my yeah. playstation doesn't even have a cd drive i yeah. don't think so mm. everything i get i have to download it my computer doesn't have a cd drive either no, mine so everything is just download it, yeah. it's funny isn't it because i feel like whenever any industry or medium whatever just like transfers to the digital age there's always a kickback from the oldies right mm-hmm. mm. you know it happened it happened with music i remember when you know napster came out which was like this big illegal downloading website for mp3s and all that sort of stuff but then it became legal because that's the way it had to be because mm. otherwise it just kept happening illegally mm. and like when all these services came out musicians are hating it and i'm sure a lot of them still do but even with music like because I pay for Apple Music, right? Spotify, whatever you get. Yeah. You'll download an album, and if it doesn't hit straight away, you're like, oh, I'll try something else. Yeah. I'll try yeah. something else. I'll try something else. It's the same sort of vibe, but like at the same time, future generations will think people used to own. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. That's the matter. I just had it all here on a big mm-hmm. drive. And it's weird that games are one of the last ones to kind of catch on. And when you talk about, like, obviously, the whole, being the whole like illegal downloading stuff like obviously music and movies were one of the first ever things to probably start being illegally downloaded so there became these subscription services and with that it was like people and at the time i'm sure when it first came out it was probably so cheap now it's much more expensive like subscriptions are way more expensive now yeah. than they used to be yeah people probably thought oh you know what i'm i can't bother to like download all this stuff then import it to wherever they need to import it to let me just get the subscription service probably saves me a lot of ag and obviously the same with movies people started doing the same with netflix and i think they having priced it so low gave people the opportunity to be like oh yeah this is this is much better way of being able to view whatever i want of you yeah. and now the prices are being hiked up and up and up to the point where it's just like unreliable to have multiple different services mm. So we can talk about the benefits of, you know, there being streaming services for games now as well. Yeah. But what does it mean for the future of how those services are going to be? Because we talked about earlier, physical games, we can all still get physical games and we can buy our own downloads. But in some of the articles I was reading, it was pointing more towards like eventually Xbox, for example, are going to take over and 
only there's only going to be certain games that you will only be able to get with a subscription service mm. instead of ever being able to download them and own them for a higher price. Got you. Which I think, I hope that never happens yeah. because there are some games I'm happy to, I always get like the, the one pound free trial on Xbox Game Pass. If yeah. I know there's a game that I might only play for like a couple of days with my friends, mm -hmm. sorted. One pound free trial on Xbox Game Pass, saved myself a loads of money. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be games that you want to spend hours and hours on. And if that's over the period of multiple months, you're paying way more. Yeah. So I don't know. I hope that doesn't happen. I really hope that doesn't happen because that seems like probably the worst way to go about gaming. I don't know what the answer is, to be honest. No idea. I think it's just going to be, I think it would be difficult because like I have Game Pass. So when I look at the, the range of games, like they're nice, but I'm, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to play any of these mm -hmm. for like for the foreseeable future kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So like, for example, one of the top, one of the top games on Game Pass, I think is Forza. Now I like is, Forza, yeah. but I don't know if I'm going to play Forza in August. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to play it in like July. So it's like, do I, do I keep, do I keep that on sort of thing? Mm. Like, I don't, I don't know if the range of games is enough for me personally to be like, Oh, I want to pay eight pounds a month kind of thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I there's so many new games coming out though, that I do think it's good. It, it gives you the opportunity to try so many of these new games. And I don't, I don't know. It's a tricky one. I feel like the ownership side of being a gamer is sort of like shifted away from the actual game itself to items within the game. Yeah. Mm. So like you, you have ownership of your, like maybe like an exclusive skin or, weapon mm -hmm. or like whatever it is you know i feel like that's where people are leaning if you're playing fifa mm -hmm. it's your ultimate team yeah you know you own this formation you own this sorry this squad yeah and it's the same with um like fortnite like, yeah this is my skin and this is this is what makes this game yeah. mine. do you feel like there's been a switch over from like maybe caring so much about owning the game physically itself into what you have within the actual game. Yeah, I think my, like microtransactions is like a massive thing now. And I think obviously you mentioned Fortnite. I think Fortnite just kickstarted everything, especially with the live service and thing. I think they've just, they've set the bar like so high because literally the game was, the game was free. Mm -hmm. Like everything just drops straight away. And I don't know how they do it, but they're so up to date with everything, whether it's like anime or like football or like, I don't know, rugby, music whatever the case may be, too. music too. Like they had that massive Travis Scott event. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they are so up to date with everything. And I think having that alongside the microtransactions and having your own item really does go a long way. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people are trying to do it now. And it's very difficult because like, I don't know, like for me, like there was a period where I was banging, I don't know if you remember Multiverses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I yeah. love that game, mm -hmm. but obviously I don't play it now. And obviously I think it stopped. And people, people are like, oh, the game didn't find its audience and all of that stuff. But it's always going to be very difficult because like Apex is here, Warzone is here, Fortnite is here. So I do think, again, going back to live servicing, I do think it's a, it's a great thing. But I think it's also, it also kind of makes it difficult for other companies to come through if they're going to try and do the same thing that mm. Fortnite does. But in terms of like owning your own items, I definitely think there has been a switch to like owning stuff because like mm -hmm. ultimate team we're all about ult our ultimate team like if i get zico if i get ronaldinho if i get thing that's cool um fortnite's the same warzone's the same so i think that's that's the direction it's heading in don't you think it's weird that eafc is still a, a, a game that you purchase yeah. at this point now like yeah you I, I thought that that would have been like subscription service what do or you like think tied to a subscription service or even free, free to play is, yeah. at this point now because when you actually look back I've spent so much money once a year buying the new FIFA yep. mm -hmm. like 40, 50 quid or whatever to, mm. to, to buy the new game and it was always just a, another. it was almost like an update of the yeah. previous edition but you, they got you to go buy it and it's like at some point you'd think that games like that that release every not just FIFA but like all the any of the sports games that have like a yearly release, even mm. like WWE or whatever, you think it gets to a point where it's just like, okay, we're going to update it for the 
for the next season, like Fortnite. Yeah, you see a lot. I mean, a lot of games that because ha- FIFA has like microtransactions, right? You buy Loads. packs. Yeah, a lot, a lot. And they make a lot of money from that. For sure. And you see a lot of games that have microtransactions in them and make a lot of money from microtransactions. The the base game is just free. Mm. Yeah. Because they can afford to make it free. So it is kind of weird that FIFA hasn't done that. I mean, you have it with Fortnite. Fortnite mm-hmm. is completely free. Rocket League is yep. free. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think. Yeah, it is. Um, the game I play, Overwatch, used to be a paid game. Now they've introduced like viable battle passes mm-hmm. and skins. Game is now free. Valorant free. Valorant free. Valorant's free. Zone free. So mm-hmm. when you think about it that way, yeah, they're they're slacking on not making their game free. That yeah. is a bit strange. As, for me, as long as like the big like Hollywood blockbuster banger releases are physical, mm. I'm cool. Like I feel like. Yeah. If you ever sell me a digital copy of Zelda, don't want it. <laughs> when, whenever, you know, Grand Theft Auto comes out. Oh, I, I need the physical copy. People want to be, wanna be going down I need to get the, physical the shops of GTA, at midnight yeah. and, get, and queue outside. Like that's still going to happen for big AAA titles, I think. I hope so. Especially yeah. like GTA. 100%. I miss that. I love that feeling of going into to one of the, the game shops and, and them going, oh, we sold out. Oh. And I'm like... Fine, I'll go. For, I'll find it somewhere else. You've got, go, you got to go far and wide to I'm, search for it. Oh <laughs> my god! That's it. But that was good. Yeah, no, I loved it. I loved it. I wouldn't trade it in for the world, honestly. Yeah, I, I feel like that, that's the key. I think for the, you know, games that take several years to produce, develop, and then bring out, they're the big banger titles that yeah. should definitely, for uh, as long as it takes, yeah, be physical. I mean, and you just it makes you think like, are developers and stuff go? Because I don't know how. Xbox Game Pass is make if they're making any money at all. Mm. And the only way that I can see it being like sustainable is if you can only get those games on Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. So you have no option to get it outside of that subscription, which mm. is I guess, you know, Spotify obviously has like the monopoly with music because yeah. you can get absolutely anything on there and such a range and people listen to such a wide range of music that it, it's it's worth it to pay for a Spotify subscription. Yep. But I don't think I'm ever going to simultaneously be playing that amount of games that I'm going to be paying 10, 11 pounds a month mm-hmm. when I play pretty much the same game all the time anyway. Yeah. So I think we're a long, hopefully a long way off of games being exclusive to streaming services. I feel like we're part of this like really... Like fascinating, mm. we've been real serious on this podcast. <laughs> like a real fascinating, like window of of the world where like everything is instantaneous. Yeah. Everything mm. is now. Everything, yeah. you know. Like for example, I, I think back to. I think we should actually reflect on some of our favorite physical purchases here. Just no, not a the tip of the cap or whatever. Oof. But like when the Wii U came out, I went to the launch in London. There was a big giant Mario guy there walking around. You know, you got a free hoodie with it. The, the store was packed out. Um, and, like, that's a, that's something I'll never forget. Whereas now, you know, like when the Xbox Series X came out and the PS5, both home delivery. Yep, straight away. Straight to my Amazon. Amazon, straight. And I think that, 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 again, takes... It sounds daft, but, like, you know when you order something and it says the delivery time is a week? Yeah. Every day, you're like, oh, I'm on wait. Another closer mm. day. Whereas now it's like Amazon Prime, it could be there like one o'clock yeah, the next literally, day. Yeah, literally, literally, yeah. And it just, still, I, I just think that all of these things sort of make items and, I sound like such a boomer. <laughs> but it makes them no, lose their true, shine. Yeah. You know, it does, nothing means as much anymore. It's like, you know, social media, for example, everything's throwaway, right? Everything's yeah. like next, next, next. You, you've got to have like a two second you know, capture attention within two seconds or it's on to the next, on to the next. Mm-hmm. You guys know this is like content creators and stuff. But like nothing hits as hard. Nothing means as much when everything's so instant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that when I'm buying like a new piece of tech, like tech is probably my favorite thing to buy depending on whatever I'm enjoying at the time. Recently it's been music. I've just been buying myself loads of pieces of music equipment. And you're right in saying that like when I was young, maybe it's also to do with like having adult money as well. I think that makes a difference because when I was younger, if I wanted something, I'd have to save up for like weeks and weeks and weeks Mm -hmm. to get something. And now even if you don't have the money for it, just Klarna, do you know what I mean? Like you've now got it instantly and you can worry about paying for it later. But I think you're right in terms of like, now there is just so much and so much choice and you can get it so instantaneously. It just doesn't, it's not exciting anymore. That's it. Like I I think I'm more excited for the idea of getting something yeah, than getting, getting it, yeah. it itself, same, which yeah. is I think it comes kind down of worrying. to policing yourself. What I mean by that is like, 
if you want to love it, if you want to get excited about a video game, if you want to be like obsessed with the idea of getting a video game, you just got to say, all right, for the first couple of months this year, that's the only game I'm going to buy. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to download any of this and I'm going to make that my thing. Because if you just, it's like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory if you have Game Pass. Like every chocolate tastes the same. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how do you create that buzz? And like, you, no one's going to do it for you. You've got to do it yourself now. It's just about self-control, I think. It, so. I think it is. I, I need yeah. self-control with, I, I don't Everything know. I, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. I think it, the way to make things more special is to really limit what you you allow yourself to have or like allow yourself to save up for and just saving up and ge- I need to do that more. I always tell myself, okay, if I achieve this, mm-hmm. I will reward myself with this. Yeah. And I end up just somehow fast tracking my way to being like, oh, I can get this now. Like yeah. I deserve this now. Yeah. Um, which I guess you're right. comes from both being able to think, have things instantaneously and also having adult money. TN, which- favorite physical, physical copy memory that you've ever had. You know it's got to be a FIFA one, though. Nah, I don't think okay, so, you okay. know. It's got to be either... Nah, it's, I think it's Tony Hawk's Underground, you know. Oh, what, what a game. Wow, not even Pro Skater 3. Nah, I don't Tony, think I ever had Underground. Tony Hawk's Underground. Because like, the thing is, um, back in the day, like where I lived, like it wasn't... So before Blockbuster took over, there was like this place called Choices. I don't know if anyone remembers. It's like yeah. a throwback store. So it was called Choices. And you used to be able to like rent games like you could rent a game for a week for like 10 pounds or mm-hmm. something something crazy like that so i would walk in there and i'd go in there all the time because i'd try and fix my disc because they were always broken and i remember i never forget like i saw tony hawk underground and i was like mom please like i was like i'll go on my knees in the store like, i was i was ready <laughs> yeah, to do like whatever it took and obviously a bit of back and forth i did get the game and i remember just opening it up and and on the way home, all I did was like look at the manual because I'd never played Tony Hawk before. Manuals. I just I would look and I'd see like <laughs> I'd see X to like jump or like <laughs> triangle to like grind, and I was like I I don't know it was just it was so surreal because like I didn't re- I didn't go in there expecting anything, but like you know when you're in there you got to try and wriggle your way through. So like I went in there and I saw it and I like I didn't really think anything of it, but it was just so significant to me because I think it was something that I'd never played before. Obviously, it was a physical copy as well. And yeah, I don't know. Something just about the drive home and reading a manual was, mm. was always satisfying. Or like when I'd buy FIFA, I know how to play the game. But you'd like, read I'd the read the manual. Yeah, because there might be something I missed. I, I just this is what know. I'm saying. I, you won't remember when you downloaded FIFA 22 or whatever. You know, These things disappear. <laughs> Go, yeah. But like, the memories. That's, I remember when Blockbuster existed and uh, I convinced my mum to take me. It was like 25 minute drive. <laughs> Because I wanted um, Die Hard Vendetta, it was called, on the GameCube, right? Yeah. They had one in stock. I get it. I get home. I rented it for three days. And I thought, I'll try and complete it in three days. And then I've got to send it back, right? Yeah. Get home, open it up, and it had Turok, which is like a dinosaur game inside. And I was like, mum, will you take me back to rent a cat tonight? I'll take you tomorrow. I'll, put, I'll spend that night playing Turok. And it was awful. All I wanted to be was Bruce Willis. <laughs> And I, oh, that's pain. so sad. That's, they're the things that happened back in the day, but I, I wouldn't swap it for the world. Nah, it wouldn't happen now. You wouldn't get a download code for like FIFA for and then you world, redeem honestly. it and it's a dinosaur game. Do you know what's really weird as well? Like, I don't know why I remember this, but do you know like when you had a case with a game in it mm. and you open it, you, hear, you could hear that little shing of like mm. the CD, like shing. Like, Give it to me. Oh, or if it good. had like multiple discs and it oh, had that, yeah, like, and flappy, had that flappy one thing. in the middle. Oh my God. Hold on, hold on. We all remember this. You ready? You grab it. Yeah, ah. get that get that plastic, the plastic up and tear yeah. it up. Ah. <laughs> oh, and then you look at it and you go, oh, the oh, cracking that was sound. A great that was a very good. I that, forgot yeah, all about that. that the crack, the crack, and then the yeah. pop. Oh, oh the pop. Yeah, man. yeah. Great but times. again, now you don't. You know, it's all on a hard drive. Great times, man. It's all on a hard drive now. It's it's heartbreaking. It what, what's your favorite physical purchase? Oh, my favorite physical purchase. It actually, do you know what? FIFA was a really good run for me. And I, I, you know, I, I moaned about every year thing, but it was when Asda was like the, the hottest place to get FIFA. Yeah. So like Asda with a 24 hour one, that if you could find one around where you lived, you go there at midnight. Well, I'd go at 11 o'clock, get in the queue and there'd be a queue of people just like me going, you're here for the, the FIFA, <laughs> FIFA midnight release. It's weird you don't get that anymore. That's kind of sad. So and we'd all just be stood there talking you know about what we hope was going to be better. Purpose, yeah. What's going to be different this year. Great times, and man. then you get to the front of the queue, you, you buy it, and then you get home at about 12.30, and then you stay up to like 4 a.m. playing the new FIFA. Great times, And man. it was just like 
that was un- that was unbeatable. It's kind unbeatable. of like Pokemon going away. Like when that that was like oh a revolutionary God. thing, and you would walk the streets and you would see other people just kind of holding their phone yeah. in the same way that you were holding it. You're, you're like, like you're, you're playing, playing Pokemon. You're bro. playing Pokemon I see, Go. I see. I, I covered remember, more steps than yeah. anyone playing that game. Honestly. It was like you would go to a park and everyone there would just be like looking around for po- and like doing this on their phone. Oh. And I was like, I know that you're playing Pokemon Go. Everyone we have for- been moaning here, but I think we're right to because they're the things that make life worth living, right? Yeah. When you come across and be around people with the same thoughts, mm-hmm. feelings, and yeah. interests as you. And I think that's what makes physical copies so cool because like even when you'd go to you'll know this feeling guys right cex or game or any of these places game station when i was younger you would hand over the disc and the person behind the till would go oh this is a great <laughs> oh. you know when they go yeah. oh you're playing this one out <laughs> uh, and it's like yeah yeah what's it like what oh, and if they said mm, not sure about what let me just swap that for another one. But it's like having somebody, another gamer while you're buying. Yeah. I still get that now. Like sometimes I'll see someone in, in the street wearing like a piece of gaming merch and I'll, I'll just feel this like weird connection. Yeah. I want them to know that I'm also a gamer and yeah. I know what their shirt resembles or something. But I think you can still, you can still get that. And you know, do you know what? I think for like the new kids now, like I can only speak for like FIFA or FC. It's like, I think for them, it's more like, they purchase the game on digital and they're just waiting for 12 o'clock yeah. kind of thing. I think yeah. that's probably what their, their like yeah. their experience will be kind of thing. Cause there's things you can do to obviously get the game early. Like you can change your location or whatever. So you can get like maybe an hour early or stuff. So yeah. that's probably what they resonate with. And obviously they have their set of set of friends. So it's probably th- that for them, but I don't know. I just don't feel maybe cause I'm, I'm old and, yeah, I've, I've had the experience of physical. There's just don't nothing. Old, I think on. there's still that sense of community though. Like I remember when Cyberpunk was coming out, and like yeah. it was just a bunch of us in Discord. Yeah. We'd all like preloaded the game. We mm-hmm. were just waiting for the time yeah. to like take over, and then it would take over, and some people can't get in, yeah. and some people can. Yeah. Everyone's like shouting and screaming. Like, I'm in, I'm in. But can we? Can we all just so agree? Fun. Midnight launch. Are we GTA. fist bumping this? Uh, yeah, we have to. Man. What are we gonna? Are we gonna make a day got, of it? We all gotta go to the same store, really. We've, yeah, oh we gotta, we gotta make. We gotta go get <laughs> lunch. Vlog it for yeah, Guild. Lunch. Um, to walk about maybe. Is it like? Is it like a, go is it like a yeah, midnight? Go, go it must be a midnight release. Yeah, it, it has be. to be. We have to make a. This might be our last chance. <laughs> to True, make a, actually, to have a I genuinely spectacle. don't think there is anything Nothing's that I would. This. I would do a. Like a midnight story. I just got goosebumps. Right? Oh, I, got goosebumps. <laughs> I got goosebumps thinking about the launch. This could be the last of an era. Does that still yeah, happen? 100%. Like they still do midnight game launches? Hell yeah. 100%, really? 100%. Yeah. For GTA, they have to though. Oh my God. I mean, the last the time cube, GTA came mad. out, I can't remember how old I was. I think six, I was like seven, 17. Seven no, it's years? been 10 years. Yeah, it's, it's been, been like 10, 10 years. years. It came out in 20, 2013. When did GTA 5 come out? of September 2013. Yeah, 2013. 11 you know years. It's been 11 years. Do you know, I remember that because I didn't go to school. <laughs> this, I just said, you didn't go to school. Nah, I said, forget school. You and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the schools were just empty. Teachers yeah. walking in like, is that Suddenly, weird? everyone is Except ill Except for the today. kids whose parents were just said no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, um, on a more positive note, you've been doing a bit of esports. Yeah. Talk I mean, to us about what you've been up to FIFA-wise. Well, um, FC-wise, sorry. FC, I can't speak. We've been doing FC Pro. Um, so I've just been like a ultimate team specialist. That's the official title for it. But um, yeah, literally been talking about the drafts. So I think the way they do it this year, it's like there's different budgets and different requirements. Mm-hmm. So I think the one the ones that I've done was like icons only. And I think it was like an eight mil budget requirement. And then the other one was like, I can't remember. I think it was like one player from each nation or something, something along those lines. I yeah. can't remember exactly. But um, yeah, I've been doing that. Um, been seeing the pros obviously firsthand, and it's been it's been a new experience for me because obviously I've done a bit of like like presenting and stuff, but I haven't gone full in. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So it was just it was a, it was a refreshing experience. I didn't find it difficult, and I I felt it felt really natural. Like normally I'm nervous before shows, but I don't know. It just felt like it just felt really easy and yeah. really smooth. I don't I don't know why, but it's just it comes with time, doesn't it? And yeah, experience, so. like you, and experience you, yeah. So experience now, in, to, in comparison, probably to when you first did a shot like that. But the set and everything looks sick. Oh, mate, it's proper. It looks, it looks it's mega. Proper. It's um, I don't know, I don't know how they do it, but it's just so organized. Like you've got like the ma- a massive like you've got the basically the presenter's desk here. You've got an analysis TV here. 
the draft show here. You've got the players playing in the back over there. You've got the little jib that's like just floating around. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah. so in depth. Proper like, TV production. Yeah, proper stuff, like TV yeah. production and stuff. And the numbers are good as well. So you mm. can't really complain. Do you know what I mean? Like, we've got like 300,000 people watching us. And stuff. Amazing. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, nice. it's popular. I mean, the thing is, FIFA's always been that massively played game across mm. not just the UK, but the world, really. And then you'd always think that the esports would correlate yeah. with that viewership, and it seems like it's getting there now. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's slowly making its progress. I still think more can be done, but yeah. um, I think it's it's making its progress. I think maybe, have a, maybe having a few more tournaments and then maybe broadcasting, like, so, like, I think E-Prem's this weekend. Mm -hmm. So broadcasting that or, like, broadcasting e -La Liga and all that stuff. If there could be a way to, like, put it on TV or something like that, I think yeah. it would just go strength mm. to strength. You still playing? FIFA I, or FC, sorry. Yeah, I am. Not as much though. I think I'm still playing for like work purposes, but not so much enjoyment. Yeah. Because I don't know. I feel like you, the lines get blurred. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I feel like I'm like, am I doing this for work or am I saying this is for work? So the things. So I want to yeah. try and clear the lines. That's why I've been playing like God of War and stuff to actually nice. say, okay, this is different. This is like what I enjoy right now. Yep. And then when it's time to work, it's time to work kind of thing. I think sometimes yeah. you, to have a little cheeky break from doing it all the time. Yeah. Oh, it's probably yeah. good for you, isn't it's, it? It's really hard to stick is, to one game consistently. I do have one last question for both of you two. Go for it. And this is more of a personal thing. Ooh. And Because I, I had a big debate and an argument about nobody watches TV anymore, right? Okay. Which is sad for me. But anybody been watching Traitors? No. no what's okay. That? So, has anybody watched the return? That's just one thing. Uh, Luke, my brother, if you're watching, told you. Um, <laughs> and the other thing, Gladiators returned. Gladiators. Does anybody know what that is? Do is you, that the the I show heard where of like gladiators? All those hench people start like climbing stuff and like, yeah. Is that, that was Did you watch it? Wait, so is I watched like the old one? ones. Yeah. So I watched like maybe the first three or four episodes, and then I don't know what happened. I think I just fell off. Wait, what is the show? Is it like an obstacle course kind of thing? Or is so it's like, it, it, was a, it was a game show in like the 90s that oh, I watched when I was growing show. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was like, it's like these big like superhero yeah. style like athletes and then regular people from regular real life mm -hmm. come and take them on in challenges and who can get the furthest is the winner. So right. it's like games where you stand on a podium, you've got these, how do you explain it? Imagine a giant earbud, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Producer Pete understands. And you have to like hit each other off the podium. Yes, 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 yeah. But like, that's a, 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 an example of the BBC like putting a load of money resource into this brand new concept. And you got to be thinking to yourself, why are you putting it on TV? Why are you not putting yeah. it on YouTube? Yeah. Why are you yeah. not putting it on Twitch? I just think it all correlates back to this, the instantaneous or on demand or like, is TV in that same bracket? Like what's going to happen? I think I think it kind of is know. like I have a TV at home at the moment and I don't have a TV license I don't watch TV so I don't need one but my TV yeah, like yeah. plays <laughs> like <Got> player. <laughs> go get it no. address on screen now <laughs> <laughs> but my TV replicates like live TV channels but they just they just play like videos of something so say it's like I don't know, like fail army and the whole like TV channel will just be like replays of those videos. Catfish, same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've just been watching replays of catfish whenever I'm in my living room instead of like having actual TV. But I think the idea of there being like kind of like a live TV channel thing on YouTube or something would go down really well. Yeah. And I don't know why there hasn't been that like, I don't know, maybe Transition. it's something to do with licensing or I don't know, but there should be because sometimes you don't know what you want to watch. Like sometimes I just want to watch something and it would be a, a good idea to just pop open YouTube and have like live channels where you don't have to really think about it. It's yeah. just there. But yeah. So how can we end this on a positive note? <laughs> I think we have talked about the pros and cons of everything yeah. pretty well. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I still love TV. Yeah, well. I, I still watch TV. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so look. Let's all make sure, and you watching as well, that we all meet at game in <laughs> Leicester Square. Maybe there's one. And we all get in that queue together. The In The Lobby squad, the Guild gang, waiting to get our hands on GTA 6. I'm ready. Fighting for Are it. you down with that? Pulling each other's hair. Yeah, yeah. I'd be, yeah, I'm down. Listen, we want your thoughts and feelings, as always, on everything we've discussed here. I know we've been like three old grumpy people just talking <laughs> about the way that the world has changed. But we want your thoughts. Make sure you drop a comment or tweet us at Guild Esports. And we'll read your comments out on the next episode. It's been fun. TN, welcome back, fun, man. Yeah. I'm happy to be back, man. First one of the year. And go follow TN as well. Don't forget to do that. Give us a five-star rating. And we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Peace. Bye. Peace.